Well, it's unbelievable in a way that the U.S. would go in front of the whole world, you know, in front of the eyes of the whole world, at least those that were paying attention, which really aren't that many people, and cause a, a coup, basically, spend a lot of money, according to Victoria Newland, to cause a coup in the Ukraine, right on the border of Russia, and expect the Russian government to <laughs> not, not to react. One has to wonder why they would do that. What made them think that they would actually do it and there wouldn't be some kind of reaction to this? So the reaction was that the, the Russians, um, in a sense, took Crimea, but did it in a way that really was uh, democratic, you could say. A lot of people in the West question the results, but... Uh, if you look at this thing hard enough, uh, you can see that most of the people in Crimea, uh, the vast majority, probably would want to be part of, of Russia and um, had jumped at the chance to be part of Russia. So it, it seems clear, really, that, um, that the vote probably whether it was 93% or 97% or whatever the numbers really were, did go in favor of uh, joining Russia. But there's a lot of things going on underneath the radar that seem uh, interesting and seem like, you know, they, they could be connected, maybe they're not. Just weird things seem to happen when there's a big event like this and it seems like all these countries start playing their hands as though this is a game of poker or something, a very dangerous game of poker, uh, you know, where, where these uh, countries, some of them would like to escalate the crisis and some of them would like to, to calm things down. And I'll just look at one example right now where I'm told that in Libya, very bizarre story, a ship with a Korean, North Korean flag, comes into a, a port in eastern Libya, uh, while eastern Libya is not recognizing the authority of the central government of Libya, which really is uh, arguably not legitimate uh, anyway, came into power because of uh, a NATO bombing campaign and um, financing of uh, rebel forces there to overthrow Gaddafi and so on and so forth. And... Um, so this uh, tanker was filled up with oil and sent on its way. Some reports have said that later on it was boarded uh, by the American military. I can't really confirm that. I've only seen that maybe in a couple different places, but I've seen the story of it actually docking and leaving many times. Now, if we look at Libya, we can see that the Russians were certainly unhappy about the NATO bombing campaign. And you can sort of discern, even within the European Union, uh, some power politics among what you would call the imperialists. For instance, it seems like, this is just my interpretation, that the Italians and the French had sort of a different view on Libya. And I think that's because they had different uh, oil interests. I believe the Italians might have already had oil contracts with uh, the former government of Libya, if I'm not mistaken. So perhaps, perhaps the war was simply so France, uh, France oil company Total, I think it's called, could get in on the action of the oil in Libya. Nonetheless, uh, this happens uh, now and it causes great turmoil within the parliament of Libya. Of course, Libya is in turmoil in general. And uh, there, there was this story where they ran out their prime minister or something because of this, because he couldn't keep um, order or security, meaning that he couldn't keep control of their oil over there. And this is all happening, you know, under the sort of uh, radar 
of uh, while this larger story, under the cover of this larger story, you could say, of Russia versus the Ukraine, which is really Russia versus the West, uh, no matter how the media would like to portray it as simply Russia versus the Ukraine. I find that interesting. Perhaps there's no connection, but it seems like there, there could be a connection. At the same time, something that seems like it, it has to be connected in some way would be these demonstra demonstrations <laughs> in, in Taiwan, in Taiwan, where uh, it looks very much the same as, uh, as many of these other demonstrations, uh, an American organized color revolution. Uh, Taiwan is there to be a thorn in China's side anyway, and apparently China had some kind of trade deal that it made with Taiwan, and that's what the, uh, the, the activists are complaining about, apparently. So, you got to wonder about this, too, and it's happening all at the same time. This is going on all at the same time. There have been several other stories that seemed rather strange and rather bizarre, to be happening at the very moment that this larger story uh, is happening as well. Nonetheless, we're at a very dangerous time in history. Uh, perhaps we're at a geopolitical crossroads. And this is why these countries are acting seemingly irrational in some ways. It, it seems very irrational that the Western Europeans would act the way they are now, as though they're willing to sink their own ship to save the American ship, it would seem. Some would think of uh, Western Europe as simply an appendage of uh, an American empire, as you might call it, and we do still have troops in places like Germany, I think some other countries in Europe as well. And that goes back to World War II, and this arrangement really goes back to, to World War II, of the current, um, I guess, formation of this American empire. Nonetheless, you would think that these countries could act somewhat independently of the U.S. They have at times in the past, and tell the U.S. that, no, this really isn't good for us. <laughs> this really isn't good for us. Strangely, they're not. They're not at this point. And one can only wonder all the things that are going on, all the little battles that the perhaps Russia and China are fighting against the U.S. under the radar, you know, uh, in places that the media is not shining the light. Maybe Africa, maybe somewhere in, in Asia or, or what have you. I don't know. And, and, and we probably won't know too much because we don't really get enough information. In fact, in the American media, we get almost zero information. We get nothing but propaganda. And here we are at this very dangerous time in history. And I would say the majority of the American people are they're sleepwalking. That's what they're doing. <laughs>